Welcome to the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast, where you'll learn the secret sauce, what it really takes to build a thriving mortgage business doing what you love, without relying on cold calling or annoying realtors. And now, let's join your host, Doran Aldana. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here, coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about seven signs your marketing is broken and how to fix it. Seven signs your marketing's losing steam and how to fix it. And it was inspired from a conversation I had with a client just uh, the other day who'd been in the business for three years. Uh, he'd been hovering between 40 and 50K in commissions earned for the last three respective years, making about 40K, 35, 40K net after taxes. And he's struggling because he was chasing realtors. He was uh, noticing that his methods weren't working. They weren't giving him the time of day. And he felt like he was at the effect of these realtors as opposed to being at the cause of really being able to grow his business. He felt like he didn't have control in his business. And it was boring and frustrating. And he was always in this prison of wonder, prison of wondering where his next deal is going to come from, wondering and worrying, you know, how many more of these cold calls he's going to have to do before he can finally get one crappy lead that doesn't convert. Cause that was kind of what his experience was. He was getting these leads, but most of them were not converting. And the ones that were converting were lower transaction sizes with lower commissions. And he was just frustrated as hell. And he just felt sick and tired of being sick and tired of not being in the driver's seat of his business not be being in control of being able to proactively grow his business. And perhaps you can relate to that. So I thought I'd do a Facebook Live inspired by this gentleman on the seven signs, the seven symptoms that your marketing's broken, that it's not working at the level that you need it to, to take your business and your income and your lifestyle and your freedom to the level that you deserve and that you're capable of. So with that being said, let's dive in, shall we? The first one is this. Sign number one is you have no exclusive top producing realtor partners. No exclusive top producing realtor partners. So by that, I mean, these are partners who send you all their business all the time. They make you their exclusive. They put you on their speed dial. Their top producers being that they do 20 transactions plus per month. And, or rather per year, per month would be cool too, but that would be stratospheric insane. That would probably put them number one in the entire planet if they're doing 20 transactions a month. But 20 per year or more is typically considered a top producer. So we've got someone who's doing over two deals or more per month, and they have a high capacity to send you the most amount of business, the most often. and you're not just one of three business cards they're passing out, but you are their exclusive. That is the ideal scenario because that's going to push the needle on profit and performance in your business at the highest level. When you have partners who are sending you that kind of business, I was just speaking with some of my seven figure lender Academy clients who are doing 40, 45 plus transactions a month. And we were talking about taking their business to the next level to be able to get to, you know, from four million for 14 million a month to 16 million a month to 20 million a month. And one of the things we talked about is the importance of being able to get more of these top producing agents. And it's the old 80 20 rule, right? 20% of your partners are going to give you 80% of your transactions, 20% of your clients are going to give you. 80% of your referrals from your clients, because again, it's the 80, 20 rule always at play. So if you don't have top producing agents as referral partners, or if you're just one of many and they're just passing out three business cards and you're hoping that the client happens to call you instead of the other two business cards, that is a sign that you're doing it the hard way. That's a sign that you do not have adequate unique value and you have not positioned yourself as irreplaceable and indispensable. It's a sign that you're a replaceable cog in the proverbial wheel. And that's never a good place to be, is it? Because 
frankly, you feel like you're just a mortgage hawker hawking rates and hawking this replaceable commodity called mortgages instead of being irreplaceable, indispensable in a category of one where you hold the cookie, you're in the power position. Another symptom that is very common that will cost you a ton of time, energy, and money if you allow it to persist and put you in a rather precarious position in your business is sign number two. More than 60% of your business comes from refis. Now, right now, we're right smack dab in the middle of a refi boom. So it's only natural to have a higher percentage of your business coming from refis just by virtue of these crazy historically low rates. But does that mean you should have 70% plus your business from refis? I don't think so. What you want to do is position your business so that you're stable and secure and reliable on a solid foundation so that if and when, not if, but when rates go up, you're not worried about it. You're still sleeping soundly every night because you know you have a steady stream of purchase business coming in. But if you're too lopsided on refis, then you're in a very precarious position because you're sitting on a one-legged stool. And as soon as rates go up and refis dry up, you would be one of the first to be affected, first and most affected by that swing in the tide from refi to purchase. And chances are you'd get caught with your pants down, unequipped and ill-equipped, and now you're scrambling to recoup that revenue from other sources, namely the purchase market and namely from realtors. So now you're clamoring after the same you know, crowd, a uh, small pool of realtors with a crowd of other loan officers chasing after them at the same time, pounding down their door at the same time, a stampede of loan officers. And you're just another average Joe LO positioning yourself just like everyone else. Great rates, great service, throw me a bone. Something tells me that's not going to work so well. Something tells me you know that to be true as well. So that's another sign that your marketing is broken is if you have over 60% of your business coming from refis. We want to flip it around so that over 60% is coming from purchase business. That puts you in a much more secure, reliable, predictable pipeline that you can count on. With purchase agreements, you can count on. With a deal flow, you can count on. And here's what I know to be true. Regardless of what happens with rates, people are going to keep getting into the market, moving up in the market. People are going to keep getting married. People are going to keep getting divorced. People are going to keep buying revenue properties and people are going to keep dying. And all of those happenings are inextricably linked with a mortgage transaction. So that means regardless of what happens with rates, if you are dominating the purchase market and you have a solid foothold in the purchase market, you can sleep well at night knowing you have a steady, consistent, ever growing flow of purchase business, regardless of rates. So that's the kind of economy you want to create. You want to create your own economy by virtue of having that network of referral sources in the purchase market. Now, the third sign that your marketing is broken and that you're doing it the hard way is that you're cold calling. Cold calling realtors is absolutely doing it the hard way. And chances are intuitively You know that to be true. Every time you pick up the phone to call a realtor who doesn't know you from a hole in the wall, you feel it, right? It's this resistance to, ah, I just hate this dating game. I hate wasting my time with these people that energetically just don't align with who I am. I hate all the rejection. I hate all the resignation and cynicism. I hate this energy gap where people think that their shit doesn't stink and, you know, I'm just wasting their time and I'm having to grovel for business. Who wants that, right? That doesn't feel right, but that is indeed doing it the hard way. And unfortunately, that's how the lion's share of the quote unquote mortgage marketing experts or mortgage marketing coaches are training mortgage professionals to grow their business, to cold call realtors, to cold call the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday. Are you kidding me? That's the best you can come up with. There is a much smarter, easier, more intelligent way to grow your business. And intuitively, you know that to be true. There's got to be a better way than caveman marketing from the dark ages, cold calling. And yet that's what these coaching programs are recommending to do. That's what 
really well-intended, well-meaning mortgage professionals are ponying up good money, big money to get these coaches to tell them to do, to cold call. That's doing it the freaking hard way. That's like trying to build the foundation for your skyscraper, digging the hole for your skyscraper with a gardening trowel. When we know there's something called an excavator. Come on now, let's upgrade to the 21st century, folks. There are smarter, more efficient, more effective ways to go about doing it. They're so much more elegant, so much simpler, and so much easier, and so much more fun. So there are no brownie points for doing it the hard way. There are no merit badges for doing it the hard way. So why do it the hard way? So if you've been doing cold calling, you'll be glad to know there is a smarter, better, more effective way to do it. It's called using technology to send the right words that work to these top producing agents using voicemail, text message, email, such that you can have the cream rise to the top of people who are receptive, eager, and motivated to speak with you. And now you can book appointments with top producing agents like a hot knife through butter without the hell of cold calling. Imagine that, what a novel concept, right? So that's the third sign that you've been doing it the hard way if you're cold calling realtors. The fourth sign that you're doing it the hard way and that you're leaving a shit ton of money on the table is that you're worrying where your next deal is gonna come from. Worry is another way of saying fear. And fear is the ultimate peace stealer and joy stealer. It corrodes your peace, it corrodes your joy, and it corrodes your power. And so what it does is it have you play a victim role in your business where you're worrying about the future. You're worrying about how you're going to pay the bills. You're worrying about the uncertainty and the unknown of your future. And that has you being at the effect of life instead of being at the cause of life. You're worrying because you don't have control of your business. You're worrying because you really don't know the best way to attract more quality leads. You don't know the best way to invest your time, your energy, your money. So you're basically just waiting for the phone to ring or you're grinding longer and harder cold calling. And it puts you in the sense of worry because even if you're grinding and cold calling and feeling like you're, you're doing something to push the needle on your business, it's a slow grind. It's like watching paint dry. It's like having to slug through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet. It's no fun. And again, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, when you you know burn and churn through all these prospects to no avail and you waste all this time to no avail with fruitless toil, it's worrisome. Let's be real. It is. It's like, how long is this going to continue? How many more hours am I going to waste unnecessarily? And meanwhile, the bills keep piling up. That's worrisome. So that's another sign that you're doing it the hard way, friends. If you're there, I got news for you. You're not alone. That's a big reason why people reached out to us for help is to get that problem fixed once and for all, kick that problem in the teeth once and for all, and to actually have a battle-tested, proven, tried and true plan to grow their business, to gain control of their pipeline, to gain control of pushing the needle on profit and performance in their business. But I'll tell you what, that worry is nonetheless a real thing. So you're in good company. That's most of some of our best clients came to us in the exact same spot. So you're in good company there. Now, the fifth sign that you're doing it the hard way and you're leaving a lot of money on the table is that your income is up and down like a yo-yo. So perhaps you can relate to this. You have a great month this month, next month, it drops down to almost nothing. It's up and down, up and down, feast or famine. And so there's this sense, again, of uncertainty, of unreliability, uh, of wondering, you know, am I going to have a good month next month? Am I going to have a good quarter next quarter? And so you hold back from planning vacations, you hold back from renovating the house, you hold back from, you know, buying that car you always wanted or whatever it is, because you're worrying is my income going to drop? And, you know, obviously it's good to have your lifestyle expenses be well below your means. That's a good thing. That's intelligent, right? To have extra money to allocate into building wealth and to investing in real estate, investing in building your net worth and building equity. And of course that impacts our spouses too, right? Especially us dudes, our wives, they're wired for security and 
for having financial certainty to not have to worry, are we going to have enough to pay the bills this month, sweetheart? Right. And so that impacts our spouse as well in a big way. Us dudes, we can go out there and warrior and we can, you know, feel like, hey, you know what? This is only going to be temporary. This is only a temporary thing. And so we can man up, warrior up, champion up, and we can walk through the fire if that's what it takes to get through hell. Uh, our ladies, on the other hand, they're much more sensitive to the insecurity and uncertainty of financial turbulence. So that is real impact. And it impacts us as dudes too, because we want to slay the dragons for our ladies and we want to be the hero for them. We want to show up as the champion that they married if we're married or you know that they believe in if they're our champion and our advocate. They believe in us. They see the great in us. We want to step into that and we want to own that. We want to deliver what we've promised we want to deliver what they see in us. So all those did not, dynamics are in play here. And so that income going up and down like a roller coaster, I call it the roller coaster ride from hell, feast or famine is a real pain. And it comes with real sleepless nights and real stress and real headaches. So that's a symptom, again, of you not being in the driver's seat of your business and doing it the hard way. We've got to find a way to break through that inconsistency and build consistency in your pipeline. The sixth sign that your business is in a precarious position and that you are working harder versus working smarter, doing it the hard way, is that your average loan size is at least $100,000 lower than optimal. So for example, if the average loan size is $250,000 in your market, and you're doing loans for 150,000, that's a problem. You're leaving a lot of money on the table there. You know what that means? It means you don't have a intelligent, strategic, and uh, you know reliable method to get those higher end deals. And if you don't have that proactive, intelligent, strategic method to get those higher end deals, you're just taking anything that comes your way. Anyone with a pulse who can fog a mirror, even if they come from a trailer park, right? You're gonna do that deal, why? Because you're not strategic about targeting the higher volume deals. Does that mean you should be targeting the jumbo deals? Not necessarily, but there's a sweet spot for you. And if the average loan size in your market is 250,000, we want to get you in the upper echelon at the 300,000, 350,000. And the fastest, easiest way to do that is to align yourself with a small, select, elite, hand picked stable of top producing realtors who make you their exclusive and put you on their speed dial and send you all their business all the time while working on your terms, not theirs, because you flip the script so that they need you more than you need them. You flip the script so that you're irreplaceable and indispensable. You're in the driver's seat. See, you hold the cookie. You're in the power position. So that is one of the fastest ways to give yourself an instant pay raise, friends. Get those higher average uh, loan per deal uh, transactions with higher average commissions per deal with more affluent clientele because those top producing agents tend to work with more affluent clientele who have bigger transaction sizes with bigger loan amounts with bigger commissions to you. So why not strategically go after those? Why not, right? If you can, why not? Anything less, frankly, is doing it the hard way. And last, but certainly not least, the seventh sign of doing it the hard way is that you're frustrated with your lack of progress. You're frustrated with your lack of progress. In other words, you may be doing great. You may, may be doing better than most. But if you're not making progress, if you're stagnating, or if you feel, if you feel like it's a slow, slow grind up the mountain, and you're working way longer and harder than you should for your take home after taxes, and you feel like you're in a bit of a rut in the same spot, and it feels like it's watching paint dry to get yourself to that next level, then even if you're doing better than most, making 150K, 200K, 250K, 300K, or, or even beyond, if you know that you're born to soar and soar like an eagle and you still feel like you're scratching around in the chicken yard with the chickens, that is a frustrating source of pain for you because you know you're designed to soar, not scratch in the chicken yard with the chickens, but soar. 
So if you're feeling that frustration, it means there's greatness inside you that wants to be expressed. There's a champion inside you, a winner inside you, an unstoppable self inside you, the best version of yourself inside you that wants to be expressed, that wants to take flight, that wants to spread its wings and soar to new heights. And if you're in stagnation mode, then that's flying in the face of that desire. Because if you notice that even if you're not where you necessarily want to be yet in terms of income or freedom, if you feel like you're making positive strides in the right direction, if you feel like you're making gains in the right direction, it's thrilling, isn't it? It's exciting. It's like, yes, I'm making progress. Yes, I'm moving forward. Yes, I'm moving in the right direction. So it's direction, not destination, that's most important. It's feeling that positive trajectory in the right direction. So if that's you right now, and you feel like you're capable of so much more, you feel like, man, I could, if I could just crack the code on this marketing thing, I could easily double or even triple my income. I'd love to be able to give my family a better life. I'd love to be able to stack my bank account and build the asset column and the net worth and the retirement fund and the kids' education fund much more rapidly. I'd love to have an emergency fund where I don't have to worry about the furnace blowing up or the car breaking down because I've got a nice juicy stack of money just sitting there for emergencies. I'd love to be able to be a leader on the leaderboard. I'd love to be on the stage of my life, not just in the obscurity on the sidelines. And you're ready to really step up in your life. I mean, it's been a challenging year for many people. 2020 has been a challenging year. But at the same time, it's been an incredible year in the mortgage business because rates have been so low. And you want to maximize this refi boom. You want to maximize this purchase boom because even the purchase business is booming because rates are so low. And you know this is a window of opportunity you want to capitalize on. This is the mortgage gold rush right now. You want to make sure you got your picks and your shovels and you're perfectly positioned to prosper in this market and also the market beyond. You want to hedge yourself against market downturns. You want to be least and last effective, not first and most. You want to hedge yourself against rates going up. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So when rates do go up, you're ready for it. And you're perfectly, perfectly positioned to kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum and crush it, even in the face of rates going up, because you've got a rock solid stable of say seven to 10 to 12 superstar, top producing real estate agents who've made you their exclusive. They send you all their business all the time. They put you on their speed dial and you're giving them so much unique value that they need you more than you need them. You want to be in that position where you're in control. You're in the driver's seat. If that's you and you're picking up what I'm putting down and you're like, Dorn, I'd much rather learn from an expert's mistakes than to learn from my own because I know that learning from my own mistakes is much more costly, much more expensive. If you want to just go straight to what works without messing around doing it the hard way and you want a battle-tested, proven, tried and true system to do exactly that, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Book a call on my calendar or one of my consultant's calendars. We'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, I'll show you how. And if not, frankly, I'll be the very first person to advise you to pass on our services. Either way, though, my goal for you, my friend, is that you leave this call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun along the way. Sound good? So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you and you'd like to get more clarity than ever before on what it's really going to take to create a breakthrough in your business, not just now, but for years to come and get straight to top producer money without messing around doing it the hard way, go ahead and book a call. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So this has been a conversation or a indoctrination or an education, however you want to call it, on the seven signs that your marketing is broken and how to fix it. I hope you've gotten value from our time together today. This is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. 
Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again on the other side on the next episode. Peace. Peace.